Hey, welcome to Beyond the Basement. This is my first video on this channel. I do have a sister channel to this one called Build a Basement where I talk about 3D printers and things like that. But first video on this channel, so I hope you enjoy this first video. Uh, we're going to be doing an unboxing of a bunch of parts that I've recently purchased for a computer build for a virtual pinball machine that we're going to be building here on this channel. So check out the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you like, and uh, I'll see you at the end of the video. See you soon. Hey, first and foremost, first episode here of Beyond the Basement. Uh, I'm Kerm. Um, I know you got a little intro before this, but uh, we're going to jump right into this. And basically what we're looking at are computer components that I recently purchased for a pinball build I'm going to be doing. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We'll start off with the biggest thing here uh, in terms of the PC, which is the motherboard. Uh, I happen to get this one on Amazon. <clears throat> this one in particular was an open box. Um, but I felt pretty safe because if I have issues with something on Amazon, I can usually just send it back and not have an issue. So I ordered it. Um, so let's open up, make sure everything's in there, make sure everything's good. And I'll talk a little bit as to why I purchased this particular motherboard. All right. So this is the uh, Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. And um, this is kind of a uh, little bit of an infamous motherboard uh, or there's some memory issues here. Uh, specifically, I, I went out on a limb and I got some cons. Uh, yeah, Cor I can't even say that. Corsair, that's how you say it. Corsair memory, um, I wanna say Consair, but Corsair memory, which notoriously has issues running on this particular motherboard, but I wanna see for myself. Uh, there are Corsair memory uh, kits that are listed. Uh, on the ACU's web, uh, website for this. So I want to see uh, what, what my experience is so I can pass along to anybody else that's out there. Uh, the, the more available products are and the more products you can choose from, the better deals you can sometimes get. So uh, today we're not actually building, we're just going over what we have, kind of a kind of an unboxing type of thing. So anyways, this is the tough uh, gaming motherboard, the X570 Plus Wi-Fi. Uh, it's for AMD, I'm going Ryzen on this build. Uh, specifically because on the Ryzen processor I have the cost versus the clock speed uh, specifically with a, a pinball or virtual pinball build you're looking for clock speed uh, not so much with you know a ton of cores uh, obviously you do want a few cores uh, because you're going to be running an OS and you're going to be running software and there's a lot of stuff going on there but the actual software can't really take advantage of uh, cores more so it needs the clock speed so anyways AMD there um, the chipset is the X570 there are newer ones out there uh, the X570 is not bad it'll work for what we have uh, this one does crossfire we're not using crossfire we don't really have a need for that much GPU uh, they put DTS on here uh, for sound uh, surround sound I assume Again, yeah, something we're not going to be using but it's in there it says Windows 11 ready the sticker they put on there so uh, basically, it's just saying that the BIOS is compatible or the UFI is compatible with Windows 11 because there are some certain things in there you need for that. I haven't decided if we're going to run 10 or 11 on this. It's not, it's, I mean, it's going to be connected, but it's not really all that important for what we're doing here. <clears throat> and then PCI, uh, i.e. 4.0 ready. An HDMI built on this, but we're not going to be using the HDMI on this. Uh, on the back side of this, real quick, they go over, they got some specs on this as to what it looks like, the layout of it, but who wants to look at a picture when we look at the real thing, right? So let's get this thing opened up. And that reminds me of Unreal. If you're of a certain age, you that probably also reminds you of Unreal. So, all right. So inside the box again, this was an open box from Amazon, but I'll leave a link uh, in the description as to all these parts. Uh, so if you want to check them out or something, you can. Uh, we got some standoffs here for a uh, uh, our um, memory, our NVMe memory card or uh, memory. Uh, we have a package here with a couple of SATA cables. Uh, we have a backplane uh, here, and we have. A Wi-Fi antenna, or a Wi-Fi antenna, if I want to say it, it's Wi-Fi. I'm going to call it Wi-Fi though, because why not? Get your attention. So, we got that, we got that. And inside the package, inside the special plastic bag here to protect it from all the electrical discharge, all static and whatnot. Uh, and we also have, let's grab all this stuff out. Put 
this aside here. I'm kind of surprised that manufacturers are still putting uh, driver CDs into things because um, I can't imagine all that many PCs are being built with drive these days. But um, okay, we already went over that stuff. So yeah, so it comes with a, uh, a driver CD, chipset drivers, things like that. The standoffs we talked about, uh, a couple of uh, some decently cool stickers, black and gold. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Time to gear up. 20% off cable mod cables. So it's like a little coupon for something if we wanted it. Uh, certificate of reliability. <clears throat> so this is going over kind of the, the uh, reliability assets that are inside this board. Specifically talking about the capacitors they're using on this. Uh, moisture resistant, solvent resistant, uh, solder stuff. Yeah, and the chokes. So some decent chokes on this and some uh, decent capacitors. Uh, capacitors are usually the first thing that let go on electronics long term. They leak uh, and then a bunch of additional motherboard technical updates and things like that and a little manual which is nice. Uh, you don't necessarily see them that often. So manual. Uh, probably not going to crack into that other than uh, going to the header information for the power and reset. So let's take a look at this real quick. I'm not wearing an anti-static strap or anything like that, but don't yell at me. Um, there is no, there's no way this was coming out. What's it doing here? Oh, it's stuck. There we go. Um, there really isn't anything down here to develop stack with, so there's no uh, carpeting or anything like that down here in the basement. So, uh, yeah. So that is actually a very nice looking motherboard. Uh, black on black with gray black capacitors black headers uh, black here for the dim slots for the ram uh, black coverings for uh, the uh, nvme, uh, NVME uh, and then chipset with a fan which is a little different but kind of cool uh, we have headers here for sata we have four more back here so a total of eight on this thing um, we have our pcie Right here is where our, uh, our video card is going to go. Our header here for powering up the processor. And then our standard ATX power supply heading here. Looks like we also have uh, a COM port if we want to use those types of things and a bunch of other stuff on here. So layout's pretty decent. Uh, plenty of room here for processor and heat sink for that. Uh, they did keep stuff a little bit away and the capacitors are down low so they'll be below anything that's there. This looks a little close, but we'll see. Uh, again, we're not actually going to assemble this today, but I just wanted to look at it. Uh, up here we have two antennas for a um, uh, diversity antenna, I would assume. So we have one, two. Uh, we have five ports here in a, in a SPDIF or a, uh, a light port here, a SPDIF port for digital audio out. We're going to be using these audio jacks here for multiple channels for um, using exciters inside the build that we're going to be doing. So we have five of those there. A uh, multitude of USB ports, USB type C, an old PS2 port, uh, looks like a DVI and an HDMI and an ethernet port, which I believe is a 2.5 gig port. Might be a 10, but I think it's 2.5. So that's that. <clears throat> I'm gonna set that aside for now. And Take a look at the processor real quick. Now, this is the Ryzen 5 5600X. Not hugely expensive. And actually, before we jump into this, let's, um, let's actually look real here real quick at the actual motherboard here. Some additional information here on the ASUS website, anything I forgot. Um, they're talking about the M.2 heat sink uh, for the MDME. Um, they're talking about, what else do they have in here? I oh, don't see this, anything about the, oh, the, the audio Kodak here with 108 dB signal noise ratio. So that's, that's pretty decent. Uh, and there's headers in here for LED lighting, which is kind of fun. We're not necessarily going to be using that, but it's cool anyways. Uh, 12 plus two, Dr. Moss power stitches. So uh, metal oxide 
on that. And let's see here, Digi VRM, bunch of catch stuff more than anything else here. So uh, let's see, durable, stable, reliable. That's what we're looking for. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see here, Realtek L8200A LAN Turbo LAN Utility. Not telling what the port speed is, but we'll find out. Don't really need anything too fast anyways, but anyways. Uh, let's see, power. six layer PCB. Uh, again, one of those things that doesn't really mean a lot. Uh, the thickness of the copper inside the PCB actually means more. Six layer is relevant to how they designed it and how many layers there are, how many sections are available in layers that they can actually make stuff across. Um, as time progresses, PCBs get uh, more and more layers inside of them. Kind of like processors get small and small, those traces inside of those PCBs also uh, get thinner. Uh, let's see here, immersive game networking. All right, yeah, gigabit ethernet. All right, so this has gigabit ethernet on it, which is good. Uh, and then it also has integrated Wi-Fi 5, so if we want to do that, we have that as well. Uh, in this particular case, this Wi-Fi, if we had the throughput on our network, would possibly be faster than the ethernet port that's on here. Uh, as for the gaming, uh, let's see, audio shielding, excessive, uh, exclusive, I should say, codec. I don't care what you're but the auto shielding, that's a good thing. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of electronics inside this build, so having some additional shielding on the audio isn't a bad thing. Um, and then stuff about the chipset and whatnot. Yeah, basic stuff. Uh, on the Ryzen side here, so let's, uh, in case you've never opened up a processor before, uh, I'm going to slice this right here. Inside this box, there'll be a processor as well as a heat sink, um, a fan on that as well. So right here on the side here, we'll pull this out. We have our processor. This is the brain. If you've never built a computer before, this is going to be a crash course. But um, the biggest thing on a processor, especially in AMD, the current versions of them, uh, they have tons of little pins on the backs of them. Um, these little pins on the backs of these processors do not bend them. Uh, I have had at one point in time, I actually dropped a processor and bent over a small section of pins on there, and I used pretty much a microscope, and I don't even remember what I used to bend them back, but I bend them back enough to make it usable, but that was a very, very scary and difficult thing to do. Uh, this is the RAF cooler, I believe, that's in here. Uh, AMD boxes this up with their CPU. Now, this is not a Totally state-of-the-art, huge copper fin heat sink. This is actually really small, to be honest with you. Smaller than I thought it was going to be. Uh, so this is an aluminum cooler. Uh, no copper to be found, no heat tubes or anything like that. Just a fan on top of a cooler. This cooler reminds me of some of the older coolers from maybe 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, coolers today have tend to go a lot bigger uh, and better, uh, along with water cooling as well. Uh, the bottom section here, uh, this paste right here, this is thermal paste that they pre-applied on there. We're going to be removing that when the time comes uh, and then clean with alcohol. We're also going to be cleaning the top of the processor with some alcohol and then using something like uh, some Arctic silver of some type or uh, what's most stuff here, I don't know what that is, but I usually keep some paste, but I prefer to use some fresh um, compound to do our heat transfer on here. But that does come with it, so if you're not into doing that type of thing, you just want to slap stuff together, uh, it does have a pad on there already. So I'm gonna put that back in, like so. Put this back in here and slide this back in here and get rid of this because we don't need them and uh on the ryzen website real quick here or the amd website i should say with ryzen i do not want to take a survey um so ryzen or amd has really in the past i would say five three four five years i don't know exactly whenever they started coming out with the ryzen processors um Kind of socked it to Intel. Intel for the longest time with their core i3, i5, i7, i9s uh, really had a stronghold on the whole processor uh, market. They, they were the only name in the game. Uh, so AMD when they came with the Ryzen processors they really kind of souped up their game and they did quite a bit to get there. So uh, <clears throat> Ryzen processors are pretty darn good actually. They, they, they're very efficient for what they are. Uh, they have high clock speeds, they have high core counts. Uh, most of them are unlocked for overclocking. 
uh, and they're just all around great processors. So we went with the Ryzen uh, 5 or 5000 series, and specifically we're using a 5600X, but they're they're showing here uh, a Ryzen 7, Ryzen 9, and some other stuff here. I don't know why they're not showing all of them, but that's fine. They don't need to see them all. Uh, let's see what else we have here. All right, here's a comparison. So Ryzen uh, 8500, we want 5000, there we go. So we have a 5600X, I believe it is, 5600X, yes. yeah. So 5600X, we have six cores with a total of 12 threads. So there's two threads per core. Uh, it's basically like hyper-threading. So it allows it to do uh, two per core on that. And then we have an up to 4.6 on the boost clock and 3.7. And that is the RAF cool that came with that. The base clock's 3.7. Uh, the core count, again, we're not highly, uh, you know, we don't have a, a ton of play in there, but this does have the lowest core count with the highest amount of uh, uh, processing speed for that single core. Uh, it is also uh, a relatively low power uh, requirement on there at 65 watts. Uh, I like to buy processors that come in below 100 watts. 65 watts is a good sweet spot for the Ryzen processors. Uh, when you get a processor running 65 watts, chances are it's not going to clock itself down as often as a processor that can go up to 135 or even higher amounts of watts. Uh, thinking of again as a light bulb, 60 watt light bulb, puts off a lot of light, puts off a lot of heat, and think of 100 watts. I mean, you're, you're talking about a ton of energy to that processor. I mean, the package on a processor uh, it is about, you know, maybe two by two inches. And that's just a ton of energy that goes in that little spot that you need to dissipate the heat out of. Uh, if you can't do that, what happens is the processor to protect itself will lower the clock speed inside of it. Therefore, kind of stepping itself down from what it can do. So you get throttling, you get kind of like uh, hitting the bass, hitting the brakes, hitting the gas, hitting the brakes. And um, yeah, bad experience. So 65 watts, 4.6 gigahertz, uh, six cores, it's fine for what we're doing. And uh, that's pretty much why I went with this particular processor. So there's a processor. Okay, so memory. And this is, uh, again, one of those things that might bite us, but I wanted to find out. And that's kind of why I went with the Corns, uh, <laughs> can't say it. Corsair memory. Um, these uh, Vengeance LPX dims are uh, pretty decent, they're pretty nice. They come with heat spreaders on them. So, DDR4, DDR5 is another whole conversation. And I don't recall, I don't believe, I don't believe that the X570 will do DDR4 or 5. No, only does DDR4. So here's the thing with memory currently is for the most part, if you're looking at reasonably priced memory right now, early 2024, uh, you're going to find DDR5 memory that's going to be on par with DDR4 memory in terms of the actual speed that you're going to get out of it because of the clock speed of the memory. So it doesn't really make sense unless you're buying something you think you're going to be upgrading over time or something like that uh, to get a, a motherboard that's able to do DDR5 and B, to buy actual DDR5 memory. Now, if you're building a computer for other uses that you may upgrade as time goes on, say you're building yourself an office desktop or something like that, that you want to keep using, maybe upgrade over time, not something that's going to sit there and basically have a use, um, then you may want to look at something that you can upgrade uh, more so in the future, like with the DDR5. So these are DDR4. Uh, timings on these are pretty decent. Was it uh, 16, 20, 20? Uh, and these are 3200 megahertz dims so very good for what we need and this is 32 gigabytes which is probably a little overkill but I'd rather have too much memory than not enough memory these days is hella cheap I'm getting old so I can recall when a couple of megabytes of memory would cost hundreds of dollars um, that's if you could upgrade it so I remember when mem memory used to come in four and eight megabyte uh, sims and gems and stuff like that. So that's the memory. Uh, so for our, our SSD, our NVMe, we went with a one terabyte, this guy right here. And I, I'm not familiar, I have to say, I'm not familiar with this brand, but I've had very good luck with solid state memory in general. I haven't had much of it cause me any grief or issues. 
This is one terabyte, so this should be enough for the OS and any software we're gonna be running. Uh, I, I'm going to possibly be purchasing a larger card uh, or temporarily putting in a mechanical hard drive in for the actual uh, tables on this pinball or this uh, video pinball machine. Uh, but this will give us a good head start for all the software that we're going to need. One terabyte should be more than enough for that and it was cheap enough too. And like I said, I will go over that uh, when we get there. Um, so let's now, let's go into probably the, the second most, or probably the most exciting thing, the most thing that people are interested in. And that's video cards. So what I do with video card in this build is I've gone with the GeForce RTX 4060. Again, I think it's a good balance. Um, it's not, you know, the highest of the high end. It's decently high end. Um, I believe it has enough speed to keep up with what we're doing. Uh, the, the biggest thing about a pinball machine is, it's hard for people to grasp, is that you're, you're not looking for graphics in the form of, you know, high frame rates for a first person shooter or anything like that. But what you're trying to do is recreate a physical machine with high frame rates. Uh, at, so in this particular case, it's gonna be 4K, 120 Hertz, HDR. So that alone takes a lot of, you know, power to do it. Uh, we're not gonna be running, uh, you know, the, the newest first person shooters out there or anything like that. But I'll tell you what, if you're, if you're running 4K, 120 Hertz, HDR, uh, and you don't want any, you know, any jag or lag or anything like that in there, uh, you need a decent uh, video card to, to do what you need to do. So, this is it. And I could have gone with a 3060, uh, but this is actually about the same price, slightly faster performance for what we needed. So, it was a kind of a no-brainer. Uh, completely wrapped in plastic here, which is kind of odd. Well, not odd, but a waste. I don't know why they do this. So I will say, if you if you're building one and you get a video card and you open it up and you don't notice, you might want to check to see if there's plastic on it because that will eventually start to heat up and fall away, maybe get caught in a fan or something, and you don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna get rid of that right now. All right, and then a couple right here. That could be that sound that you wind up hearing, that did 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 sound. There's some plastic get caught into a fan. So, um, so very, very, very nice looking here in terms of what they've done with the build. This is a translucent black up here, which is why they had the plastic on it. Some nice, look like some high push fans here. They have a very, very exaggerated tilt on the blades uh, to push through a lot of air. Uh, they are using some heat pipes here on the back side here to spread everything around, push everything out. Uh, I'm going to guess that the majority is happening right here, our actual processing. Uh, however, they are pushing both in this direction towards the front of the card or the back of the machine, and then back over here on the other direction to really spread that out through a really big radiator there to, to push through. Um, <coughs> blade connector right there for the PCIe. Um, and then on the front side of this, and I thought I'd put these back in because I don't need to. We have one HDMI and some display ports. One, two, three display ports on there. Um, so HDMI, we're going to use HDMI. Uh, and then we're going to be using at least two display ports for uh, a couple other screens that are going to be on this build too. We're going to have to adapt those over HDMI because none of the TVs I have are going to use H uh, are going to use display ports. So I may have said uh, DVI earlier, but I definitely meant display port. Wrong one? Yeah, I grabbed the one HDMI one when I want to put back one of the DVIs. That's the way it goes. All right. Uh, let's see here. What else can we say about this card? that we haven't yet. Um, not too heavy. Power connector on the top. This will suck down juice. This will actually use more power uh, than the processor. But we ain't scared. We have a very, very nice power supply that we'll jump into here in a moment. Before we do that though, my 
want to take a look at the webpage for this. So put that nice black box on this too. Very nice kit. Put this back away. Uh, yeah, on the website. So, uh, eight gigabytes uh, DDR6 on this. Let's see, actual tech fans. Actual, axial tech fans, it's hard to say. Uh, basically, it's a high level of, or the high degree bend they have on those. Uh, let's see here, 2.5 slot design for board compatibility. Up to 2x performance power efficiency, fourth generation tensor cores. Uh, let's see here, third generation RT cores for ray tracing, things like that. This is an overclocked edition. I mentioned that before, I think, when I said the title of it, but uh, basically this is uh, uh, able to be overclocked just a tad bit uh, directly through there. It means it has enough cooling on the actual unit to be able to do that. That's pretty much all that means. Um, ball bearing fans, good fans, zero dB technology to enjoy light gaming in relative silence. So basically it can clock down those fans when it clocks down the processor so it doesn't need to run those fans at full speed. Uh, again, we're not going to hear this. This is going to be deep in the cabinet. Uh, a bunch of pictures. I showed you a bunch of those. Two fans, two times the fun. Uh, yeah, cool. Coming soon. I don't know it's coming soon. We have one. Reviews, solid. So anyways, that is the video card, the GeForce RTX 4060, eight gigabytes overclock edition. Uh, and I think the last thing we're gonna actually talk about today uh, is the Thermaltake power supply we bought. So there are a lot of brands and Thermaltake's been around for a long time. I like Thermaltake uh, quite a bit. Uh, this, this is probably one of the larger uh, power supplies I've purchased. I tend not to buy huge power supplies. Uh, I think people oversell and overbuy when it comes to power supplies. Uh, you know, buying thousand watt power supplies and things like that. Uh, the big thing is, is that power supplies, if you look at a chart on efficiency, you have to be using approximately 65, 75, even 80% of that total power to get the efficiency out of it that they rate. Now, that being said, let's look at that real quick. This is ATX. 3.0 compliant, uh, smart zero fan, uh, and main Japanese capacitor. So again, with the capacitors, right? So tough power, 750 watts. So that 80 plus gold is what I actually want to show you because I started talking about that. So 80 plus means that this will be 80% plus efficient uh, when you're running power through it. It also comes with a 10 year warranty, which is a huge, a huge warranty. Uh, I don't think I've ever had or I've never even thought of a power supply after uh, 10 years. I don't know if I've had many computers that long. So uh, let's look here. Efficiency right here. Yep, this is what we wanted. So they're telling us right here, this is the, the load right here between 0% and 100% and then efficiency going up. So this sweet part right here is around 50% is what they're stating. I think probably we could all agree it's around 45-ish maybe. So, and 115 volts, which is what we run here in the United States, or 230 if you're in a country that uses that, uh, you're looking at efficiency that's peaking around 45%. Now, that being said, 45% uh, give or take of this, 750 watts, 375, 350, we'll call it, maybe 350, between the processor and the video card, the motherboard, maybe a few other things that are gonna be drawing power, will be right in that efficiency curtain. So. Uh, there's a reason for that. <clears throat> so let's see what we got here. Very nice packaging. Pull that out. And pull out the backpack of goodies they put in there. All right. And that too. So first things first, let's, uh, let's take a look at this power supply. And let's remove the plastic so we don't forget later. Again, these little pieces of plastic, if you're building a computer or anything, you have fans around, they can get loose over time, sucked up and pulled into a fan. So a huge fan inside here, looks like 120 millimeter plus or minus. Um, definitely not minus, it might be bigger actually. 
right there. And then on the top here, there is a button called smart fan on off. So that's probably, let's see, the fan does not operate if PSC is at low load, silent fan operation. Okay, so off basically means that the fan will not run. That's kind of scary. Uh, fan not running is kind of scary to me. Uh, on means that basically as things heat up and you're using more power, the fan will kick on. But the fan only kicks on when it's using power. So on off power right there switch, which you're probably only going to do once because it's supposed to be inside of a computer or inside of our cabinet. Uh, and the primary reason for getting this power supply, not only the wattage based on what we're doing with it, but because this is fully modular and I like modular power supplies. And what they mean by modular is that all of your cables are separate because we're not going to use a ton of peripheral cables for this. And to the point where we're probably going to want cutting some of this because we might use some 12 volts uh, in some other places that, that, uh, that aren't specific to the computer itself. So this is a 300 watt connector for our power. And that's going to go into something like that. Then you have a connection like that that comes in. And if that's the only connection you're using, that and maybe the uh, the 24 pin ATX, uh, and maybe the CPU, that's all you hook up. That's all you need to do. You don't have a bunch of wires floating around. Uh, again, if we're, if we're using that uh, M.2 uh, drive inside the computer and we're not doing any other SSDs, we're not doing mechanical hard drives, we don't need to power those things. Uh, we pretty much are going to need uh, power, a 12 volt power for the, uh, or the PCIe power for the video card, the CPU power for the, um, uh, the CPU, and then the ATX power board, uh, power for the motherboard and the things connected directly to it. So we're not really going to need any of these SATA connectors uh, in, in the end of this, other than maybe if we want to steal 12 volts for something else. But very good packaging, very nice here from Thermaltake. Uh, don't really know why they gave us a little pouch for this other than they wanted to make it look nice, which I can appreciate. Hopefully it didn't add much to the cost because this is a one and done type of thing. Uh, but yeah, this little bag here with all these uh, connectors in it for that, that's great. Gives you a place to put them because you will not use all of them or most people will not use all of them. Uh, they also give you a little manual in here that tells you a little bit about what each thing is, what kind of connectors they are and whatnot. That's kind of nice different languages, different setups. So they also make a, it's like, well, this is like a whole fold out thing here. Wow. So it looks like they also make a 1200 watt, a 1050 watt, uh, 850 watt. I mean, these are outrageously huge power supplies. You people are crazy. You figure if you have a, a 1200 watt power supply to get in, you know, the maximum amount of efficiency in there you got to be using between five and six hundred watts on your computer minimum to get to that so yeah all right so that's it first video i hope you liked it all right so that was the unboxing of the majority of the parts for the computer system going into this virtual pinball machine so if there are any questions or comments or if you have any opinions about the parts i selected i'm more than happy to hear your thoughts. Maybe I'll add them to the next video we do. Next video, we're going to talk more about putting the processor, the memory, and the MVNE, or the uh, M.2 drive in the motherboard. Uh, maybe bypassing the need for a power switch for this because we're not necessarily going to have a real power switch, like a real computer power switch on this thing. So we'll do that. And then maybe we'll go ahead and we'll install software on there in a video coming up soon after that. We're gonna be hooking it up to screens. We're gonna be doing that type of thing. We're gonna be building a cabinet. We're going to be doing a bunch of things on this particular build. Now, this is my third arcade style build. So I'd like to also talk about some of my other builds as well. And we'll do that down the road, but uh, hopefully you stick around. Hopefully you've gone ahead and subscribed to this video. You've hit that like button and um, hopefully I see you in the next video. See you later.